Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoterica. On today's episode of On a Technicality, we're going to be showing you how to use a pin crimper, and more specifically, how to crimp pins onto wires so you can make yourself a custom CPS2, CPS1, or otherwise kick harness for your arcade equipment. What you're looking at in front of you are all the tools you're going to need, and we're going to go through the process. Uh, what you're looking at right here are the 110 quick disconnects. You also have the appropriate pins for that CPS2 harness, and then you have the CPS2 harness housing. You're going to notice on the top it is keyed. There are ridges here, so there only is one way to insert it. So when you're looking at your pinout, you're going to want to use that as your top, and you will see on the underside there is no ridging there, so that is not keyed. And then additionally, you just have your 22 gauge hookup wire for that harness. So what you need to do here is strip just a little bit of the insulation away around the wire. You need maybe an eighth of an inch. You don't want too much wire exposed or else it will interfere with the pin receptacle. So when you plug the harness into your board, you'll actually be mashing on that wire. I'll show you in the next shot um, visually how much wire you need. It'll be apparent when you're actually working on this stuff. So taking a look at the pin, you're going to see there's three sections. Those back wings are meant to hold the insulation of the wire, and those middle wings are meant to actually make like a cold weld spot when you crimp them. I use a pair of needle nose pliers and just come in and pinch those wings. That way the wire is held on to that pin with the insulation. Makes it a lot easier when you have to go to crimp things. So take a look at the pin crimpers right here. You have three different gauges marked on the side. And when we put that pin in, we're just gonna pinch down to actually make that crimp. What we're gonna do is go to a side view to show you the exact alignment, but that is kind of just the procedure. Once you take that pin out and I show you this close up, you will see that those two wings in the back are been bent to hold that wire. So from the side view, you're gonna see those three sections. You do not want to crimp anything in that front pin receptacle. Focus is really hard here, but you'll see that when that crimper goes down, we're only crimping those back two areas, and that little line on that front pin receptacle is not touched. If that is distorted in any way, it will not fit into the pin connector, and you're just done. It's worthless. So showing you guys just doing it with a wire, the number one thing you need to make sure, other than that front area is not in the crimper, is that it is lined up perfectly. If that pin is turned ever so slightly to the left or to the right in the crimper, when you crimp down, it's going to shear the wire off completely. So that is something you want to watch out for. So now that we do have that pin crimped on, what I do is check continuity at each stage. One end of that tester is on the bare wire and the other one is on the pin itself and you will see that we have continuity. So to put that 110 quick disconnect on, you're just going to match your quick disconnect to the color code on the side of your crimpers. When you put that quick disconnect in there, you're just going to turn it to the side and you're going to feed that bare wire through until you have it in the housing. Um, you want to make sure that you don't go too much further than the barrel that you're crimping. If those wires are too far forward, it can interfere with your connections on your arcade buttons. So you definitely want to make sure you avoid that. But once you get that wire in, all you're going to do is push down on those crimpers as hard as you can. Don't go gentle. You can't over crimp it. You're basically making a cold weld joint on those wires. So when you crimp it, you should be able to pull that wire. It's not going to come out whatsoever. So my rule of thumb is anytime I make a change to that wire, I check for continuity. It takes five seconds so I know we're good. One end on the quick disconnect, the other end on the pin, and we have continuity and we're ready to stuff the connector with that pin. Push. That's all you need to do. It's the dumbest, easiest thing. It seems like it should be hard, but it's not. And then you have one wire of your quick disconnect kick harness made. If you did stuff the wrong pin number though, it is easy to remove the pin. Just take a pair of tweezers, go ahead and wedge one end under that plastic housing right there and push the pin backwards. Don't do it too many times, the plastic will break, but if you make a mistake or something happens, you can remove that pin from the housing. Now that we have that pin in there, I'm gonna check continuity one more time. One end on the pin, the other end on the quick disconnect, and we have continuity, so we can just continue this process for all the pins we need with our pin out, and you end up with your kick harness. What you see on the screen here is my kick harness to DB9 connector for my super gun. You can have any connection you want at the end of there. You can do kick harness to quick disconnects like you see in the middle. You can do quick disconnects to DB9, DB15, any connection you need whatsoever. But that's the basics of how to make a kick harness for your super gun or arcade cabinet setup. Thanks so much for watching. If you do us a favor, go down below and hit the like and subscribe button. It takes us a lot of time and effort to make these videos. Otherwise, we'll be back in two weeks with a really intense custom project that I'm launching that's going to use a lot of different skills we've gone over on on a technicality up to this point. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.